TCT presents Public Report, a look at the issues and events of importance to our viewing area. Now, here's your host. Hello, welcome to Public Report. I have the honor to be your host. My name is Richard McCorkle, and I also have another honor. I'm with my lovely wife and co-host, Crystal. How are you doing? Doing wonderful. We have a great show today, and yes. I'm very excited Me about too. this. I am. This literally show up, showed up in front of our face yes. uh, just a few days ago, and we just discovered a wonderful project that is happening that everybody needs to know. So I have the honor of having our guest, Billy Redman. And Pastor Joseph, Bless you. welcome to our show. Thank you. Or welcome to Public Report. And um, we're going to talk about the Uganda Baby House. So tell me a little bit about that. Well, first of all, thank you for having us. Absolutely. It's our privilege to be with you and to yes. share some information with you about this project. So yes. um, our church, Pleasant Grove Church, which is located on Davis Drive in Cary, mm -hmm. um, we're part of the missions committee or missions ministry. Each year we try to identify a global initiative and maybe yes. more than one, along with local opportunities for our people to serve face to face, be the hands and face and feet of Christ. Okay. And then to also provide resources and support globally to initiatives around the world that we want to support and encourage. And so for about seven years, we've been working with a nonprofit called Embrace Uganda. They were founded in Wake Forest, North Carolina, but really about ab adopting a child in Uganda. And from that has grown an organization that supports three orphanages. And I would just share with you, there's about two and a half million orphans in Uganda today. Wow. And primarily because of the long uh, civil war and uh, issues around food and poverty, the numbers just continue to grow. No kidding. So they support three orphanages, and in turn, we've done a number of initiatives to support Embrace Uganda. Yes. So they have partners on the ground. Mm. One of the things that's really important to us, we know our partners on the ground. They come to, to carry to visit us, we go to Uganda to visit them. So it's a personal connection. These are people that we know, and now we've actually seen some of those babies grow up. We've so? seen children in the orphanages go off to university, oh, wow. which is so, such a blessing. Mm -hmm. So two years ago, they raised the funds from a gentleman named Daniel Johnson, okay. who owns a company called Pure Flow in Burlington. If you drive up I-85 and I-40, you'll see his company. Okay. And he very generously provided the funds to build what we call the baby house. Mm -hmm. and the baby house was built in Kuhara, which is on the western coast of Uganda, closest to the Congo. Okay. And it really was built to take infants to five-year-olds kind of out of the general population of orphans. So you can imagine being a house mother, trying to take care of an infant or a two-year-old, mm -hmm. along with an 18-year-old and a 12-year-old and an eight-year-old. They're just so different. Yeah. So the baby house has just been finished. Wow. We're really excited about what it took and resources and time to build this really special place. Mm -hmm. Our church paid to dig two wells in the village a couple okay. of years ago. So they don't have regular electricity, but they have some. Okay. And now they have clean water. And now they have this really special place for babies. So our church decided as one of our global missions this year to throw a baby shower and to fill the baby house because they built the baby house but it's empty. Wow. And so our disciples came together to provide money or to bring gifts yes. that would enable us to fill the baby house so that the children there have a place to sleep and a place to sit and a place to eat and a place to study and learn but really about being safe and being in a loving environment. So that's, wow. um, that's sort of how our partnership came to be and then yes. what we have been doing to support Embrace Uganda and the orphans there. Awesome. And Pastor Joseph, that must be uh, a terrific feeling to be able to do something like that. Yeah, I think uh, this consistency with our mission mandate and uh, overall uh, vision for our congregation is to that we, we don't just want to send a, page, uh, a check uh, out to individuals, but we really want to be engaged and have partners who are consistent in their mission to really be the face of Christ on the ground. Yes, yes. yes. So that's really, and so what the, the beauty about that is to see our people rise up to the challenge. Yes. Under Billy's leadership, you really get folks motivated, activated, and to really participate in the process. Mm -hmm. So it's not just sending things, but really right. sending a piece of us, yes. part of us, yeah. which is consistent with what our church represents. That's great, great. Like that. So it has a real personal touch. Yes, yeah. yes. So who, how many, is, is everybody in the, in the church community involved with this? Did they have a decision in there? Or how does it even work? 
you know, really, start. our mission ministry each year, the, in the previous year, sets a budget. Our church has a policy that we tithe on our uh, income. We give 10% to missions and benevolence in the community, and, and we have a really nice balance. We, we serve urban ministries in Durham, the Dorcas House in Cary. Mm -hmm. oh, we yeah. do work with Neighbor to Neighbor mm -hmm. and with other initiatives around. Habitat the, for Humanity. Habitat, okay. we, build okay. a, you know, we help build yes. a house each year. And so then we look at our global initiatives again, what can we do and what would be the most impactful? So several years ago, Pastor Joseph led us on a mission trip to Haiti. Okay. And we yes. visited the schools that we support there. We bought a generator, we took things, and we really went to sort of teach and preach mm -hmm. to encourage and to lift up the schools and the orphans there. Wow. So this year we decided it might be a good year for things. Mm -hmm. You know, you go, you give, you do. And so this year it was like, okay, if we could give, things, mm -hmm. particularly things that would last potentially decades. Yeah. So we, we went to Embrace Uganda and, and the baby house and asked them what they needed, yeah. uh, as opposed to us saying, here are the things we're going to send yeah. you. Right. So we got this great okay. list, we created a registry, people could choose based on a budget. We had things wow, that were a good. dollar. We had things that a plastic chair for a child to sit in is two dollars. Okay. A crib was 75, okay. but they're metal. They'll last for decades. They're not susceptible to some of the um, insects and things. So okay. it was really the right way to partner with them to get them what they needed. So the church just sent the money for Embrace Uganda's mission team, who's currently on the ground, to buy 40 cribs. Wow. So there's 76 children, and so we provided 40 cribs. We really want to provide at least 70. Yes. Because then every child, they have a way to contain them. <laughs> they have a place for them yes. to be. It gets them off the ground. Wow. So. We just had this entire list of things so that you could spend $10, you could spend $100, you could spend $1,000. Right. So the things that we have done that we we're really focused on too is that operationally, yeah. they told us they spend about $500 a month in disposable diapers. So we bought them two washing machines. Okay. <laughs> and so we sent diapers, cloth diapers, yes. which are really different from when my children were babies. Oh, yes, <laughs> they are completely different. They snap. <laughs> They get smaller, they oh, get wow. bigger. Okay. You wash them, they're amazing. Snappy. Okay. Snappies, right. they're real, that's exactly what they call them. And so <laughs> we, we sent 160 cloth diapers. We could, we could send a lot more, yes. you know, for that many babies. It takes a lot of diapers, but trying to be thoughtful about how could we improve their quality of life yes. and give them the things that they need. Yeah. And um, tomorrow, the Embrace Uganda mission team leaves the United States to, to join the rest of the team. Wow. So they're taking suitcases from us that have, you know, blankets and oh. diapers and um, baby things. So some people elected to go shopping. That's exciting. Yes. Some people really like to shop. They like to have it in their hands. They want sure. to bring it to the shower. Right. Mm -hmm. So w when we threw the baby shower, people brought money, picked a gift, or people brought us gifts. And right. so... Now what we're gonna do is keep that alive and mm -hmm. keep it open by doing online giving. People can go to embraceuganda.org slash baby house. Okay. And they could send the money for a crib, but they could send wow. the money for blankets or bottles or mosquito nets. Mosquito net costs ten dollars. Yes. And the um, ability to avoid malaria is so important. So sure. mm -hmm. um, so there's there's no lack of opportunity to give. Right. And Pastor Joseph, this 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 is a sort of a, um, a long-term long-term giving because you're investing in mm -hmm. a life mm -hmm. and w that that to me just ch charges me up to know that you're not just giving it just to pad the bleeding mm -hmm. it sounds like you're starting a life off right mm -hmm. and helping yes, with that yes. um, Billy mentioned uh, Haiti mm -hmm. and people don't realize they're still not in great shape down there yeah. um, from the tragedy that happened quite a few mm -hmm. years ago um, so what, what is your background in, in missions well, I've been doing mission as long as I can remember, mm -hmm. over 25 years. Okay. I think it really is consistency, again, with who we are as messengers of Christ. Yes. One of the last things Jesus said was, go ye therefore and make disciples. So we take that literally. And our pastor really, uh, the senior pastor, pushed that mandate and make sure that we understand that it is not, it's not enough to just send a check, right, or to stay within. We have to go without. Yes. And we are very community oriented or focused on making sure people in our community see us and yes. see our commitment to be the face, the heart the, you know, of Christ. So I think that's really what it is. So where can we have an impact? And what we talked about in our mission ministry is identifying key partners. Uh, as opposed to sending $10 to 
10,000 organizations, mm -hmm. find five or six organizations that we're gonna partner with for long term. Right. And yes. watch that develop and grow and be invested in their success yes. and work with them through the long haul and see what happens. So it becomes a ministry, not just, again, sending something once in a while that they don't see you again. So we get to know our partners. Mm -hmm. You know, they get to know us. So we are vested in their success and we work with them along those lines. Wow. So, you know, so that really, that is our vision and really want to make sure that we're having as much impact with the resources that God has allowed us to be able to steward. Yes. And I, I really love the name Baby House. <laughs> and where did that name come from? Yeah, I think they made it up. They made it up. I think they made it up because the orphanage in Kohara yes. is an orphanage and it's a village. Mm -hmm. And I think they really said this really is for the babies. Yes, and it's a good name. It's a good you know. name. It captures your heart. Yes, it does. You know, that's important. People give from their hearts. You know, we know God is generous with us so we can be generous with others. That's right. yes. And so whatever it is you have to give. But I think babies always really make that connection. They really do tug at your heart. And if you see the photographs, we have photographs of the babies. Yes. We know their names. Awesome. So even though we haven't seen them, we, we've looked at the baby pictures, we've looked at their names, and you make that personal connection, yes. it, you just can't forget their faces. Wow. Yeah. Do you remember any of the names of the babies? Mm -hmm. Yes, there's uh, Moses, Moses, oh, he's a precious looking child, Rose, uh -huh. there's a Joseph, there's a Christina, so, um, you know, all names that we know, there, there yes. are children's names. And right. so uh, you just make that personal connection. Absolutely. Yes. And, and how do you think, um, I know they're very, very young, but how do you think they f they're going to feel? How do you think this is going to really help them in their development? You know, the, really the only way to change the level of poverty is through education. Okay. Yes. And so, as we saw, we see it in our work in Haiti, the work that Pastor Joseph and our pastors done in Niger, and now in Uganda is that, you know, a baby needs to be safe yes. and loved, fed. Mm -hmm. It needs to be in an environment to grow and thrive. And of course, all the orphanages are, are Bible-based, Christ-centered education. Mm -hmm. But what we really want to do then is move them on to university, whether that's a skill training or through um, education that might even take them beyond, far beyond Uganda to advanced education. That's the way for them then to come back to their country with knowledge and skills that will change the poverty, Absolutely. change the employment opportunities that they have. Without an education, they have little opportunity other than That's to continue true. a life in the fields and working in the bush. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, here in the West, we are always talking about the trauma we had as children and stuff and how that dictates us as adults. And I can't imagine the trauma of third world countries uh, with the, the just the survival mentality because mm -hmm. that's what it comes down to mm -hmm. so that that must give you a totally di different perspective of life here in the west how do you communicate that to your community how, how can we all communicate that to our individual tribes here <laughs> you know the first project we did in uganda was about a well mm -hmm. and so we had a video uh that was produced and given to us that were actual um, action shots of the kids, mostly women and children, go to gather water probably twice a day. Wow. The water that they were walking miles to get to bring home, we would not have washed our cars in. Wow. Oh my goodness. Wow. So the concept that this is the water you would drink, that you would mm -hmm. cook with, that you would bathe with, is when you see it, it's yeah. that visualization that you actually see it, mm -hmm. you begin to realize how can you go to the faucet, turn on the water, and we know we waste a lot of our water. We, yeah. we use it in a lot of different ways. Yeah. Our church was completely impacted by seeing that and understanding what that meant. Most diseases are waterborne. Uh -huh. So Ooh. the ability to create a better health and a better life was that we had to change the water. So the first time we, we uh, contributed $10,000 and we dug two fresh water wells. Oh. And those wells will last for generations. No kidding. So health, oh wealth, industry, just basic living around clean water was really a tremendous introduction for our church to look around the world and see real conditions. Yes. And how does that change our everyday lives? How, how have you seen that? You know, I think we talk about it a lot more. Mm -hmm. we, we talk about it when people kind of say, what are you doing? And what's important to you? The ability to talk about the experience of seeing the video that came back to our church of our well Wow. plaque on it that says this is the PGC well yes. and those children standing with their cans to get clean <laughs> water yes. you just won't forget that yeah. it's just amazing and, and most people are visual yes they are they want to see 
what you are doing on the ground mm -hmm. and the impact that's having in the overall. So I think what it is is you have to show people the impact they can have. Because mm -hmm. yes. a lot of time we preach a lot and people mm -hmm. hear it and they cannot visualize it. Yes. When they see when the work, when our belief intersect with our practice, mm -hmm. yes. yeah. then transformation occurs. Wow. Yes. That's good. So wow. I think that's really what it is. It's showing them the impact they can have and what's happening. And so what we, the end result is that people are motivated. Yes. They are motivated to, uh, to get involved, mm -hmm. uh, to donate or whatever it is that they can do because they can see what we're doing is changing lives. Yes. Yes, and, and not take for granted that the things that we complain about yeah. every day, it yeah. really kind of makes you feel silly. Right. Yeah, right. Um, you should be ashamed when we complain, yes, really. But, yes, um, Now, how do you, how do you with, with who else within the, the community in Uganda, how, did, how are they involved with the baby house? You know, we have involved other partners in the community. We're very fortunate to have um, friends and family of the church mm -hmm. and of people in the congregation. Uh, we've raised other funds to, to partner with what we're doing so that it can be even more impactful. We've done some things where private business or individuals have been willing to write a check and donate. And, and to Pastor Joseph's point, it's a lot easier to ask people when, when you can really demonstrate what you're doing. Mm -hmm. It's, not, it's yeah. not just a, a concept or a thought. Mm -hmm. And we've had people come from Uganda to visit. We've had the grown children now who've traveled through and come to see us, to thank us, and to, to meet us face to face. So again, it's that real demonstration and connection. So it makes it easier to go out, just like Daniel Johnson, who provided the funds for the baby house. Someone invited him to an event to raise money for Embrace Uganda. They talked about the needs, and that was one of the focuses that year was the growing number of, of true infants, babies who are left to die. Mm. and it just captured him. Yeah. So Aww. he became such a great donor for the organization, it would not have been otherwise. So the ability to continue to broaden that group is all about telling the story. Yes, yeah, yes, is. yes. Now what about um, in Uganda, how is that, how is it affecting the Ugandan community when you have things like this planted there? One of the reasons that I think, or that we know that Embrace Uganda has been so impactful is that they have insisted that the local governments partner as well. Okay. So as opposed to going in and saying, we're going to solve the problem, which people in the United States have a tendency to do, yeah. we're just going to go in, we're going to solve that problem yes. for you, uh, right. is that they've gone in and asked them to partner. Okay. So much of the, some of the things we haven't talked about is a tremendous focus on health. Mm -hmm. They've built four medical clinics. Oh. So people line up when the clinic is open mm -hmm. for a day. And if they don't get seen that day, they sleep where they're sitting and they wait until the next day to be in line. Wow. So we've actually, every year, part of our budget goes to medical clinic visits for the children. That yeah. is wonderful. They can get a vaccination, they get seen. So do they need glasses? Can they hear? Do they already have malaria or an infection? But what they've been able to do is go to the local governments to say, here's what we will provide, but here's what we expect you to do. Mm -hmm. So they might provide some of the building materials or they might build a road. Yes. We really ask them to partner mm -hmm. so that we're making joint investments. It's a great example in our country would be called a, a public-private partnership. Okay, okay, <laughs> you, know, yes. you know, so the ability to use their resources, sometimes it's labor, mm -hmm. it might be skilled labor, mm -hmm. but it might be actual materials or resources. So it, it's done in a partnership environment. Wow. Oh, that's really great. And, what, and what's next? Well, that's a good question. Praying. We just keep praying. <laughs> yeah, what's next? <laughs> and, and what we're saying is God is laying forth more opportunities. So uh, every year, uh, senior pastor casts a vision as to what, what, what is the, the focus for the year. Yes. And we try to be consistent with that. But one thing that does not change is that we really want to be effective in being that face, hand, feet, heart mm -hmm. of Christ throughout not only nationally but internationally wherever God will lead us and what we've seen is God continues to increase our budget yes. every year so mm. we can do more wow. Amen. and so we think that is a sign that God is approving what we're yes. doing yes, and we are all the more <laughs> committed to ensure that um, you know individuals are being blessed uh, by God's resources they're not ours they're God's resources yes. right so we're using right. it as stewards to bless them so we hoping that God will give us a million dollars. Who knows what yes, we can do? Right. Yeah. And uh, but we know the needs are just overwhelming. Yeah. It's just tremendous. You know. So we're looking. We partner with individuals, and when we are aware of organizations that are doing good work, mm -hmm. yes, we're excited. Wow. To see how we can be a blessing.
So one thing I would say that was a great point too is that Embrace Uganda, like the others that we work with, are also 100% volunteer organizations. Okay. So there, if we if we give a hundred dollars, a hundred dollars goes to Uganda, oh, okay. not mm -hmm. 90 or 92 yeah. or, or 50. Yeah. 80 or 50. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's important. We did the same thing in Haiti, so that you really can feel like, to your point before, a lot of money was raised for Haiti but not deployed, yes. Yes. and not really yes. very effective. Right. So. Where we can, we work directly with people and organizations on the ground, yes. mm -hmm. or with a partner who has people on the ground. Yes. Yeah. So you really make it transparent, right. yes. which is why when people give, like this on online giving campaign, people could feel, if I give you $75 for a crib, you're really going to deliver a crib. The crib, right. that's right. No, right. that's yes. good. That's yeah. good to know that, because yes. people, they, they re they're really, um, they, they have their, their hearts go out to a lot of the uh, the children and mm -hmm. you want to make sure that your money is going there. Exactly. That's so important because I, I remember years ago I used to watch um, as a little girl you see the babies on television yes. and and I would I would say if somebody send their money how do we know that they're going to get that money. Yeah. Right. So and we had right. a lot of questions like this you know how do we know that X amount and I think what's, what's great is that we really want to have you know the sense of confidence that yes what you give is what's going to go out. Yes. Because the needs are overwhelming. That and I, I think our church has done very well um, in terms of ensuring that we partner with individuals, organizations yes. mm -hmm. that are really committed to investing in the communities on the ground. Right. Uh, and there is no CEO or executive somewhere who's driving whatever or doing whatever <laughs> with the, the donation. But we're yes. committed yes. to ensure yes. that's happening. And so that's part of being a good steward. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. And that's yes. wonderful. And you kind of have to get over that cynicism, cynicism because we've, we've all been kind of burnt yeah. a little yeah, bit. Right. or And we, we hear about it all the time. Yeah. But, um, I, I love it. The fact um, I remember when the it, when you, and you brought up the Haiti thing. I just remember just watching that and just really feeling that helplessness. Yeah. Like here I'm sitting very comfortably watching a huge screen TV, mm -hmm. and what can I do? I, I I need more than just throw some money. Yeah. So how can people outside of Pleasant Grove? How can we get involved? Well, there there are a lot of ways to get involved. Um, the the organization Embrace Uganda does a lot of other events throughout the year particularly focused on health and education. So mm -hmm. if they have a 5K run and they do some other things to raise money. So I would encourage people to go to their website. They need volunteers. Like they just had a significant number of volunteers who met last Saturday for a packing party. Mm -hmm. So all the gifts and all the materials that they've been able to collect over the year, you know, dental supplies, medical supplies, school supplies, the things that we gave them, they packed in suitcases to carry on their trip. So they had a lot of volunteers doing that. So they have volunteers in a lot of different ways. There's The giving side is really probably the easy part right now for the baby house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if people go to embraceuganda.org slash baby dash house, you can see the registry, you can see some photographs, and you could actually give online. And that money it will be specifically designated for the baby house. They'll actually wire the funds to Uganda and the materials will be bought in country. So no shipping, no customs issues, it really does get directly there. So okay. for the baby house, that would just be a, a tremendous blessing. And even operational money, a house mother is paid about $100 a month. Really? Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, just operationally, food, milk, they do partner with a formula company that provides formula for the babies. Okay. Hopefully we'll get away from those disposable diapers and things like that. So they're very creative. So if anyone has an idea about other ways to translate resources into Uganda yes. or Haiti or other places, Pleasant Grove would be delighted to be part of that dialogue and help people make the right connections. Awesome. Is there any uh, events that are coming up with Pleasant Grove that uh, some visitors can come and uh, I am so glad you asked that, Richard, because here's what we have. On June the 25th, which is, I think, the last Sunday of this month, mm -hmm. we're actually going to do a live feed to the baby house in Uganda. Wow. During our worship service. Ooh, I think we'll, we'll stop by. Yeah, we'll be there. That'd be terrific. <laughs> so Sunday school starts at 830. Worship starts at 945. Okay. The Pleasant Grove site is pgc carry. Mm -hmm. um, and so you would be able to actually see oh, wow. the children, see the babies, see the house, um, 
We're just praying no technical difficulties. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Full power <laughs> and electricity. Absolutely. Yes. The things that make a difference. But that's one of the things we're really excited about is the opportunity again, face to face, eye yeah. to eye connections. Yes. To see those children. I have a feeling they'll have the bigger children probably sing for us or, or do something that becomes part of our worship. Awesome. Wow. Well, and the location of the church, can you just. The church is at 1528 Davis Drive. To be honest, geographically, we're probably really closer to Apex. Okay. Okay. So we're right off Highway 64. Uh -huh. So between Highway 64 and uh, the cornerstone area of Cary, right by Preston. So mm -hmm. Davis Drive, we're next to the Cary Soccer Park. Mm -hmm. okay. Can't miss us. Great. So after this live feed, what, what else is that? What's, what's coming after that? We'll continue to work on other issues in Uganda. And one of the things we are now working on the plans is for a mission trip, another international mission trip. And I think our focus probably will be Uganda. And what, and what does a person have to do to prepare to, to go on a mission trip? What, do, if, what, what personally what I have to do is say, okay, I want to go on a mission trip. What do I have to do? What's my response? Here's a great missions leader. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, just just express a desire, and we'll sit down. Have there will be meetings. Okay. We'll provide information to let you know exactly how to get prepared. For example, passport, you know, vaccinations, all of these things have to be taken care of because yes. in a lot of these countries, you know, you won't be sure you're vaccinated. Oh yes, your passport is in order, <laughs> and um, you know, so we'll, all these will be taken care of over time to make sure you are prep, and then you know, get getting tickets and you know the agenda and what we're doing, what we're gonna be doing, and the planning. And normally that takes a little bit of a time but you know really the express desire then you know we'll announce where there's meetings okay uh, so you can get all the information and, and get ready to go mm -hmm. but we are excited because again that's really part of our commitment as a church we know I love Pleasant Grove Church because we have individuals who are giving even more excited about mission not only on an international level but also on a you know very local level right where we go and really let people see us on a daily basis as to our heart uh, for example, this summer we're serving over 150 kids lunches three days a week, wow. twice a day. Good. So again, That's seeing wonderful. the face of Christ and in action, and you know, sometimes the best sermon that you can preach is not on the pulpit; mm. it's on the ground. So mm. it's our commitment. That's some truth right there. Yes, it, it really is, is uh, the, our practical side of, yeah. of Christ, yes. and that really counts. Um, Guys, thank you so much, Billy. Thank you thank for Thank you for coming us. up and, and uh, introducing you. Pastor Joseph. It Bless is you. an absolute Bless honor. Yes, thank you. Please feel free to, to check out their information. Get involved. We're starting at the, the root of these people's lives. These are not people far off. These are people that are right next door to us, and we have a responsibility, a command as Christians, to go yes. forth. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time. This has been Public Report. Public Report discusses the issues of interest and importance to our viewing area. Please remember that the views expressed by our guests are their own and do not necessarily represent the views of TCT or the station. Jesus taught that where a man's treasure is, there where his heart would be also. You know, I love laying up for myself treasures in heaven. You can't take anything with you, but you can send it on ahead by supporting good biblical scriptural ministries like TCT. We'd love to have your help. We need your support. Pray about it and be generous when you give to TCT.